welcome, welcome, welcome to your mom's house with Tom Segura, Tom Segura, and Christina Pajitsin. Welcome to your mom's house. All right, we did a bunch of stuff, and now we're back from. <laughs> That's a good one. You like what it? was that about? What was that about? We took a break. We had to do stuff, and then there's other stuff uh, to do. Uh, uh. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm glad to be here. I missed you. I miss you. You were gone. You, you went to Fartnicks. I did the uh, second to last stop on this tour. It's crazy. And, and then we're going to Hawaii tomorrow. Hawaii. It's excite. I know. What are you going to do on your vacay? Take it easy, vape, um, <laughs> drink, just chill. Are you going to be one of those dads that's at the bar at 10 a.m. when it opens? Why shouldn't I be? I'm celebrating the year. The year's <laughs> over. That always amazes me, those people on, like, look, everyone does their thing on vacation, but that to me is like real endurance. The people that, like, I'm just saying like a Burt Kreischer maybe, you know? Yeah. Like, at the bar, when it opens, 10 a.m. until sundown. <laughs> It's a yeah. full day. It's going to be, yeah. Remember those dads uh, in the Dominican Republic when we went there? <laughs> yeah. And they found out we had a porno channel and they were like, what? Yeah, they're so gels. And they were eyeballing the uh, the girl that was taking her photos. Remember? The, like, oh, yeah. Cute young girl. And he was like, check out. Hey, get over here, pal. They're, they're like really dad and down on her. It's so sad when you become a dad. Yeah. Do you feel sad yet? Yeah, of course. Does that dad sadness creep oh, in? Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's coming out of my pores. What is the dad sadness about? You just realize that fun's over. Yeah. And, um, Responsibility. You know, yeah. Now you got to like make sure everyone's just okay and <laughs> make sure the lights are on, food in the house. Just sad. Yeah. Mom sadness is, is there too where you're like, oh, my body's destroyed and all you, I have to, I worry constantly about oh, someone yeah. else. No more joy. Yeah. No more joy. Yeah. Joy's that's so gone. true. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't think I really have fun do you yeah. do we have fun um no we don't have fun <laughs> <laughs> this might be like the most fun thing we do yeah that's probably why we've kept it up for so long uh, i'm sure it's why yeah yeah we enjoy doing this right but but in terms of scheduling fun a vacation is imperative you have to schedule vacation yeah. it doesn't matter where you're at in life i'm saying like if you go like oh vacation is expensive if your vacation is just staying home not doing anything and driving to get ice cream at night and that's your then that you need to do it you have to take yeah. a break you have to take a break i think it's better to leave though it's always better to leave the home base because yeah. i've done the home vacay thing too and then you just get wrapped up in your traditional drama it's true it it's sucks. not the same all right My, uh, let's do a traditional oh yeah show open. Oh, all right well Let's get into it. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure that I was me. taking a nap. He had come home, farted at me after <laughs> I, I assumed. I just need to make sure I'm hearing this correctly. Did you fart in her face? This shit is big time. Who is Randy? Don't bring anyone mother into this. Your mama in the fucking stand. Welcome, welcome, welcome to your mom's house. I was just laughing at Twitter. That's all. What What did you like? Because I had I, I wrote a tweet to that kid that got bullied. Yeah. And um, I guess it got tweeted, it retweeted a good bunch. Uh -huh. I wrote um, what did I write? His name's Keaton. If, if you haven't seen it, there's this kid, and he he makes this tells his mom that like kids are bullying me in school, and it's really he gets real emotional, and he talks about how how it's the kids are so mean and he's like i don't understand why they do it some people are just different and she's like what do they say to you and he he tells her like they call me ugly and they're just really mean it's, it's like a heartbreaking video and since she posted it, it went viral and like everyone is inviting this kid to shit like tennessee titans are bringing him to a football game right i know um, his celebrities are on but yeah. isn't that kind of bullying of the mother to post a very vulnerable it's video a video of her uh, no, son. It's kind of wild. Isn't that not protecting him? Yeah, and I mean, bullying him. He, well, anyways, he. It's I, I see what you're, exactly what you're saying. Yeah, I wouldn't like, do that. I'd be like, Mom, don't fucking post that video. Yeah, you're an asshole for doing but that. But it worked out in this way. So he's got Cavaliers invited him to a game. Um, three or four movie stars have invited him to movie premieres. Chris Evans. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, forget the fucking guy's name. Then Dana White invited him to a UFC headquarters. So he's like everyone's reaching out to this kid. So I just stopped for a second today and I wrote, hey, Keaton, don't get uh, uh, too too full of yourself with all this attention. I will fuck you up and there's not a thing your mom or LeBron or Chris Evans can do about it. 
And that's yeah, it. It's funny. Yeah. And it got, right now it's got about 3,000 retweets and 8,000 <laughs> likes. Well, good for but, you. But the uh, the comments underneath it are hilarious because people are either being like, hell yes, and getting that that's a joke or and putting like funny memes and, and gifts under it or they're being like really taking it very seriously. Yeah. Like, you know, you're what's wrong. Uh, not, you know, that's not funny. Who made you do this? Like, just shit like that. So it's just funny. And then I saw some guy, so people are clowning that they also started like a GoFundMe, the mother did. So what happened, because I follow this Instagram account, Hollywood Un- Unlocked or something. Yeah. And that UFC guy was on there saying that he invited that boy, but the mother was like, don't invite him. I'm not letting him go, but you can promote my GoFundMe page. Yeah. And then he goes, for what? And she's like, well, Christmas is coming and I'm a single mother and I want money for my kids yeah. Uh, fame. So she's really, really ruining this for her son, by the way. Yeah, that's not She's not cool. cool. So she's then really other cool. people started GoFundMe's for being bullied, but they're they're <laughs> making a mockery of it. Like uh, this this guy here. <laughs> 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 Some guy is looking out of like window blinds. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, What's it say, Tom? Read it says, cash. niggas stay bullying me and shit. And, it, and it's a $100,000 goal. <laughs> How much has he had so far? I don't know. He, just created, yeah. <laughs> he just created it. just created it. But it really made me laugh. So, yeah. Oh, man. I love people's um, internet internet um, things. You know what I mean? Like, it's really healing the world yeah. when you take a stand against shit. Like, oh, come on, dude. I'm, I think it's funny. I'm opposed to the terrorist attacks. Well, of course, everyone is. I think dummy. it's funny that people take this seriously. <laughs> yeah. That means that take my tweet seriously. Right, right, like, right, right. Dude, what are you talking about? Like, yeah. Well, you know? that's, you know, that's what's going to, that's what divides us. Yeah. That's what, that's, that's the, you know, I tell you, the internet is pretty miraculous in that it exposes the, the humanity of everyone and the, the joy. Yeah. And then the absolute dumb fuckery of, uh, I'd say 80%. I'd say we're at 80% retarded for for the world. What do you think? I think when people, I think the greatest, I've said this before, the greatest indicator of stupidity Mm. is when you don't process when something is clearly a joke. Yeah. So there are so many people that don't process, don't understand, don't register sarcasm or satire, irony, none of it. None of it goes through their head. That's the greatest indicator of a stupid person. That, and I would say the folks who belong that God is uh, sending hurricanes or fires because of what gays are doing. Like my mom? Stuff like that. (laughs) 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 Well, does she really think that it's to punish the gays and stuff? No, no. The butt fuckers need to be No, she doesn't think it's the butt fuckers. It's that we need to be better people to each other. Oh, right. Yeah, that's silly. She's kind of like, you know, we're... We're not being good to each other. We're, yeah. and I'm like, yeah, yeah. And then she's like, and you know these hurricanes, and I'm like, uh, um, <laughs> God's yeah. teaching us a lesson, huh? Yep. Well, how come he doesn't reward us when stuff's going well? Well, he does. Life, the what, look at all this amazing stuff. The yeah. Water's everywhere. <laughs> 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 yeah, there's stuff like that. Mm. I talked about it on stage about mm-hmm. her POV of that. I didn't do it this weekend, but I, I had been doing it, and about how, at a certain like, you you have this conversation with her and I at. 22 or 3 I am going to make sure every point that I have about that is expressed oh boy and, and I know right. it's going to build into a fight you tell me now that you think God sends the fires <laughs> and I think about the energy it would take to have that <laughs> argument and then I just go like I know yeah, yeah I know we gotta yeah. be better to each other like, well, isn't that the essence of middle age or approaching middle age I guess so is where you you just you do I'm the math too tired. of the yeah. of the exhaustion mentally yeah. and spiritually that would take mm-hmm. like the uh, that's where the they're not giving a fucks is awesome at this age of your life yeah there's so many things I don't fucking care about anymore I know things that used so to really great. wind me up you know <laughs> I don't. I just don't have the energy either. Yeah. I could, by the way, it's so funny that this was a clip. I could charge you with assault for what you <laughs> just did. It's literally you had no idea this was what was planned. No, I it's didn't. literally I didn't. part of uh, the show today. I... Vincent Posada <laughs> is suing his former roommate Carmela Ortiz in the amount of five hundred ninety-six dollars. Huh. He says after pulling a prank on the defendant, she viciously attacked him. Res- oh. 
That's so his tooth got yeah, chipped. Was, you didn't lose your tooth, but you chipped it. Chipped it, yeah. Oh, just take a look at that on the plasma. And she did. Look at yeah. that. Ooh, from the fart? And well, the retaliation. I was looking for a roommate, and my sister knew him. All right, well, how did the tooth end up getting chipped? Basically, it's going to sound a little gross, but Vince is lactose intolerant, and I don't know why, <laughs> given his age, he's not in third grade anymore, but... He, I like ice cream. He, he, he <laughs> finds... Who doesn't like ice cream? I love ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, yeah. Your Honor, so. I can cut. We're getting into that he purposely ate some ice cream, right? And he's lactose intolerant. So he knows what's going to happen. And I'm listening. he knows what ice cream does to him because he's lactose intolerant. And he tends to... I know what li it, ice cream can I don't, do to However, you. I don't like having ice cream thrown at my face, and that's actually what she used that to That is my not tea. what happened yeah, she, at all. It was all. a frozen hard brick of ice Vince, cream. Vince, so I out of nowhere just threw it's ice cream ice at you. Yeah, you. So you can already tell he's a liar, actually, I think. He's full of shit. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that I was me. taking a nap. He had come home, farted at me after <laughs> I, I assumed. Well, I just need to make sure I'm hearing this correctly. <laughs> Did you fart in her face? <gasps> Moments before this <laughs> podcast started. <laughs> You had sat here, I did. you recorded some ads, and I then did. I said, hey, I need to sit here to get back into this show. You stood up, and right here, you farted a disgusting fart. I did. And I, I farted on your shoulder, though, not in your face. Okay, let the judge explain <laughs> some things to you. Well, technically, I guess, in a way, yeah. He did fart in my face. I, I walked it's not past something her, you can and I, like, her face is going to be right by there when I was walking <laughs> There's nothing moment. confusing about was, the smell. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt about that one. Did you yeah. smell my fart? Of course, it was horrible. Has what did it smell there like? Been anything in your presence regarding this farting? Oh boy, has there. <laughs> so this is the sister now weighing in oh, on that, the fart, the, and that the, he's a, a habitual farter. <laughs> yeah. That seems to be a regular part of his act. Um, he did make a lot of fart jokes during his act, and. He it's does hard. tend to fart a lot on, on purpose. And, you know, there's the occasional slip up, but he does think it's funny to fart on people. It is funny. It is funny. What's to fart not on. funny about that? I'm not arguing that. I at mean, all. if we're in the court of what's funny, I'd say this guy wins. Yeah. This Based is... on the evidence and the testimony before this court, the gavel is going to come down in favor of the defendant. Because out of everyone that was talking, not real crazy about you, you're a little mouthy, but your sister, <laughs> she was solid. <laughs> so, wow. but then one last thing here. Really ranking those that, performances, Judge. That the uh, judge says, I think maybe you should pay attention to. Whether yeah. you realize it or not, when I talked about the chain of events, when you farted on her, <laughs> that was an assault. Assault. You don't have to put your hands on someone oh. to assault them. A fart is an assault. A fart is an assault. Well, that's interesting. We learn something new every day on this show. Yeah. Every every week, rather. So did I assault you? That's what you're claiming? Of course. An assault. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. On right what? here. Did you <laughs> fart in her face? Yes, she did. <laughs> what are the damages? What are the damages? I don't know. A million dollars. A million dollars. Well, it was for disgusting. What? Um, for be, for my emotional distress. Emotional. What did I What did I stop you from doing in your life? From getting my mind together. There's nothing confusing about was, the smell. There was nothing confusing about what, the smell. What did it smell like? Let's talk about my fart. It smelled really disgusting. It really did. Well, like what? Like sour shit. Yeah. Yeah. Why I did had it a smell salad so bad? Because I went to the salad bar and I I get my uh, Thousand Ranch. Dressing, I make it at Gelson's. I, I thought of another one, by the way. What? Remember we were talking earlier about things that we think we are? Yes. Like, you know, when you, when you like, like it came up because of tattoos. You're like, oh, I want to get a tattoo like that lady. Like you'll see somebody with like yeah. a half sleeve yeah. or some cool. I like it. And you're like, but well, then you, you go, but that's not me. Right. You know what I always wanted, want to be? What? It sounds like the leather bound uh, daily planner person. I was like, that person once in my life. I, I've bought them because I love... I love well. I love luggage, and I love, you know, let like leather bound anything, uh, uh, whether it's a backpack, um, a briefcase. Like I just, I, I have like I kind of fetishize, romanticize any artisan work, handmade, handcrafted. You know what I mean? Anything yeah, like I, that? Yeah. I go like, oh, I want that thing. But you're also but then I get it, and I and I don't we, use it. Well, yeah, I give you stuff that's leather bound a lot. Like I, I'm admitting to it. And then you, this is wallets I use. This is you. This is a literally a wallet I use, of course. But I'll hand you like a new thing and you'll go, oh, thanks. Put it down. It's gone forever. Mm. And 
Anyway, this yes, this topic came up in, in regards to the tattoo I mentioned I wanted, yeah. my midlife crisis tattoo. Yes. And I thought about it. I got many offers. On your nipples? No. Oh. On my inner arm. I thought you were going to do 2% vitamin D on the nips. That's so stupid. It's never 2%. It's all full milk. Whole milk. (laughs) Whole purple. Yeah. And I came to the conclusion that I I may want it, but I'm not the person who does it. Like, meaning I think I'm that girl. Right. But the truth of it is I shop the Gap and I'm super boring. And like, I I don't have the cojones. I wouldn't say you're boring. I would say that you just, you don't identify with that. I'm too traditional. Yeah, Yeah. you're traditional. Like, Part of me worries about being 80 years old and being in an airport. Because I saw this woman at the airport who was like 70. Yeah, with an asshole tattoo. She didn't have an asshole. But she had something on her leg that was so hideously inappropriate for her age. And I was like, I I can't do it. It's just not me. Yeah. And there's a whole slew of things I wish I could be. I I wish I could be the girl um, when they take photos that they don't smile. Mm -hmm. Like they just look like their mouth is, yeah, yeah, cool. But I always am like, ah picture like i'm so i'm like a labrador i wanted to be the get up and grind exercise guy like <laughs> i exercise i work out Who's a lot that? now <laughs> no i'm saying like i work out a lot yeah but i've always read about and hear about the guy that gets up at like five. Oh, you know that, I mean? like don like mark Wahlberg. i follow Whatever. him on yeah. instagram he's up at four yeah just like, like what are you doing with your life early oh get my the God. day started why i've tried it i hate it yeah it's terrible I, I have to work out in the, I can work out in the morning after a certain hour, like at least eight. I, I'd rather work out at eleven because I need to feel alive just to do it. You know. Well, I mean, there's people that wake up at like four a.m. Yeah, fuck that. Fuck that. Their yeah. days start early, but they don't. They work. They start work at like seven. I something. fantasize about like being yeah that that, that, that motivated. Person. Yeah, yeah, uh, just being like yeah the guy that fucking grinds it like from the I'm so before apt. the sun comes up. Yeah. yeah oh yeah. God, that sounds terrible. I um the girl I also want to be is the one that wears high heels mm-hmm. and has like beach wavy hair. Like she cur- she wakes up early and she curls it. Yeah, and then also is really into facial treatments. Oh, and- I like her. Where is she? <laughs> She's here. She's not in this house. Oh, 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 right. <laughs> and the girl who's like really up on the facials and mm-hmm. injections and like really into like that level of self care. You could be that girl. Yeah, but you know how much energy that girl expends doing that shit. Yeah. yeah, I ain't got that kind of time. Nah, I'm I'm into that. I I also fantasize about being the motorcycle guy, like <laughs> not like a fucking like a uh, in a bike gang. The motorcycle. But I'm saying like guy. I'll see a beautiful bike <laughs> yeah. and I'll go like oh, and I've I've never ridden one, and I don't really honestly don't want to ride one. When I like when I see them here on the four hundred five and like weaving between cars, oh that gives gosh. me anxiety. Yeah, it should. But what I do fantasize about is the open road in like Wyoming, yeah. you know, or you, you just see like you just picture open road. Maybe it's a maybe it's on a ranch or something, and there's like some dirt trails. And I fantasize like that'd be cool. I'd like to do that. But then I go, I, I'm not gonna do that. You know, but I still lose myself in the thought. And the yeah, because you'll see like a picture of someone, and you're like, I could be that person. I have to stop myself from buying um, luggage all the time, just because, like, especially when it gets more niche. Uh, you know, I was like, I bought a suitcase for our trip, and they're like, we have these backpacks, we have these shoulder packs, we have this. So every time it's any type of compartment that you can get, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> and I could put pens in that. Yeah, like, like I. I just want, I don't know, I fantasize that like- About being that organized? like That organized or just, I, I like compartmentalizing mm-hmm. things in a in a cool case. Oh, you know, right. I like a cool box. A, yeah, yeah it's container. almost like a gadget in a way, you know? That's interesting. It's not a gadget, but it's like a cousin. Right, right. That like the presentation of the thing. It's like why a cool cigar box is cool. It's, yeah, like, yeah, it's you, not the cigar. No, you like the container it, that the it The container comes in. comes in, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. then I, at the same time, I'm aware of myself enough- to not overdo it. So I'll see that thing and I'll go like, yeah. And then I go, you're not going to fucking use that. Well, the thing too I've realized about my personality is that I can only own like five things at a time because I'll buy, I'll buy other yeah. stuff and then I'll forget it. I'll be like, oh, oh I have that. So, or like, I just don't, I, I'll forget about it. I, buy, I, also, I can only own five things. I, I'm with you on that. I also feel like I'll buy something nice, like a nice shirt and then I'll see it in the closet and I'll go like, oh, uh, right now I'm going to, run out and um go to the grocery store and then you know run i don't know run another errand 
And I go, you should put on that shirt. But I go, but that's too nice of a shirt for that Aaron. I do that all the time. Yeah. Where I'm saving the saving, clothing saving for a for special it. occasion. And then we go like. I do that all the time. We're going to dinner. I swear to night. All but the like, time. We're not going to a nice Yeah, dinner. I do that all the time. We're just going to like a regular <laughs> joint. I should save it for. And then, then like, I, we have vacation. Years go by. I go, where, and I go, but like. Yeah. I don't want to fuck it up on the vacation. Yeah. So I better leave it here. That's the problem. I do the same thing. I have a coat that you bought me, a yeah. fancy coat, and I haven't found, I found one occasion to wear it on so you far. better fucking find another I one. I know. It's such a bummer, and it's the most beautiful coat. It is a beautiful coat. It's like- I'm really regretting and I, getting it for you. Thank you. And I inherited these ridiculous fur coats from my mother when yeah. she died, and those just stay in my closet. Like, there is absolutely nowhere to wear <clears throat> a fur coat in Los Angeles. Sorry, are you crazy? Only yeah. a crazy person buys real fur coats. Yeah, like minks and shit. This it's isn't so uh, bizarre. Isn't this is not an official dental update, but it might as well should be. This and brush your fucking teeth, please. Brush them goddamn teeth. I don't understand how you can walk around and not brush your fucking teeth. Your breath stank and your teeth are dirty. No, ma'am, that ain't how we roll. You know what I mean? That is a uh, is that a yeah yeah she was that's Jasmine Masters she was on RuPaul's uh, Drag okay, Race just making sure yeah 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 I like to clarify my confusion yeah. in my brain that's a good idea but I like the message I'm She's standing right. on board 100 percent with her hell yeah dude I need you to fix that use a little Clorox Clorox if you have to a little Listerine the brown kind so it can get all straight through she's saying she's sick she's sick of foul mouth man. You know who is she hanging out with? I don't think she has to hang out with anyone seedy to see that. You just well, see people with foul, funky ass mouths all it, the time. And the problem is, what if you're close to one of those? And how do you tell them? Oh yeah. How do you tell somebody? In my world, you just speak right up. You know. <laughs> In comedian world, you can. Yeah. You'd be like, bro, your shit's all fucked up. I know. Uh, it's shit's all whack. I've told people. Who have you told? Parents. Oh, well, that's different. You yeah. tell your mom and dad you're embarrassed about their mouths daily. Yeah. I'm always like, are you guys going to address that? <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> they <laughs> just go. laugh. I know. I don't know if they actually do anything. No, they do oh. because they've told me. My dad called me. He was like, oh, I just left the dentist. He, told, he called me that like a month ago. Oh, he did? Yeah. And how'd it go? I don't know. I'm like, did they rip all your teeth out? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, get them clean bell of health. I'm like, you're going to a liar. Yeah. You was a little... Anything, but get in between them teeth. Mm -hmm. Brush them, the front and the back, the sides. The get in them teeth. She's got nice teeth. Yeah, I was just noticing, and flossing. Does she? She doesn't even mention flossing. That's the key to good dental hygiene. She probably got hit on by someone with funky, funky teeth. That's probably yeah. what you know. What I mean, it's like a, a vent about, venting about that happening. Uh. And brush it. Quit smelling at people with food in your teeth. That's not cute. Please get it together, just thank you. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what happened. Somebody thank was like, "Hey, what's you. going on?" And she was like, "Ugh, shut up." Teeth is nasty, nasty as hell. You nasty, nasty. Mm. That's terrible. Uh, I'm always so self conscious about that. Yeah. I'm Bad too. breath, coffee breath, and stuff. Yeah, it's the first thing I do in the morning. Is I mean, I, I don't know how anybody Ugh. skips that step in the morning. Oh, remember I was we, I told I talked about this years ago on your mom's house, but. Uh, I knew somebody whose mother would only brush her teeth once a day. Yeah. And she would wake up, drink the coffee, and then go all day without brushing her teeth. That's real crazy. Real. So then she would brush like by five o'clock and Oof. they're like, you need to brush way before, way earlier. How does man? it not bother you? That's the thing. She's like, it I don't like, she goes, I don't like the flavor of the toothpaste. I don't like the taste of toothpaste. Oh. And, and they said, well, you know, you can get like cinnamon. Different kinds. You can get chocolate flavored, whatever. And so they did. They got her the flavor she liked and then, then she started doing it. But, you know, that's somebody's mom, bro. It's really crazy. That's a lifetime. Uh, Josh Weinstein was here last week. Um, and here we go. Uh, he promoted, I need you to kill the documentary that I'm in. I know I haven't seen it yet. I'm so bummed. It's okay. I can't wait. Check My, it out. Or iTunes was. Or a lot of people have been messaging me that they watched it. So thank you. You can rent it um, for a few bucks, or you can buy it. Uh, it's available on like all the pay per view cable things. It's on iTunes. It's on Amazon. Um, on IMDb, 
some of our listeners oh, shit. Uh, got into the trivia portion oh, dear. of the film. Oh, dear. Um, so there's, they're adding things all the time. Tom is a denim enthusiast who prefers to wi- wear <laughs> high, very tight-fitting jeans. Tom lives a polyamorous bisexual life with his life partner, <laughs> Christina. They have a son named Gene. Tom considers himself a mommy, just like Christina. As they say, there, there's two mommies in one gene. <laughs> shortly, so stupid. Shortly after this film was shot, Tom Segura began side career as a DJ named Dadmouth. He gives his fans <laughs> free tickets to DJ gigs. <laughs> Collaborates with uh, luminaries like Obi-Wan Cannoli, DJ Duct Tape, Luminary. Ollie Zimzer, Young Patreon, and Gaping Dad. <laughs> Tom holds a yearly comedy benefit to support the family of his dear friend, Bert Greisler, who <laughs> lost his battle with alcoholism and obesity. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Speaking of Kill, uh, Tom's favorite movie is Hen- Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. It is. You just said that you watched something about Ted Bundy that you thought was riveting and hilarious. Dahmer. Well, I saw the Dahmer thing. Even. Somebody tweeted you the uh, Ted Bundy thing. Oh. They, uh, I saw that on Twitter. Somebody said... Is this a young teenage Tom? Yes. And it was Ted Bundy being led down some courthouse stairs, sure. and there's like a kid in the background smiling. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> I think it was Vegas 702. Dude. Yeah, I love her. Yeah. Been around a long time, Vegas 702. This says also that Tom Segura found Asia to be amaze. <laughs> he was inspired to go on his trip by his spiritual advisor, Kim Ann. So that's really... Asshole. Asshole. It's really, really nice of you to... To put that up there. Do you think that um, the yeah. Wikipedias and the IMDb's of the world will figure out that this communal posting thing is not really bringing <laughs> forth truth in the world on the uh, internet? <laughs> asshole, asshole. I don't know. Because my point. Wikipedia page says I was born in Toronto, and that is inaccurate. Mine said fucking Dayton forever. <laughs> like, I was like, what? what? Who's doing this? Who's Windsor, Ontario, guys? Glamorous Windsor. Windsor, I'm from the five one three man. They twat. Yeah, come on. Now I'm not that classy to be from the T dot. Yeah. No, I don't know. People can just add what they want. <laughs> then it becomes a fact. I know. And then I do all this press stuff, and, and they're, they're like, like, "You're born in Toronto." I'm wasn't like, it great? No. I get asked the Dayton thing every week. You're from Dayton. I'm like, dude. I, I went to Dayton <laughs> the first time. I was probably 28. Right. <laughs> they're like, "That's where you're from." Like, okay. Yeah. Like Kim Deal. Kim Deal from Dayton, Ohio. Um, Dayton, Ohio. What is this question here? Somebody said, is Joey Diaz insane? Yeah. I was listening on your recent podcast. I was blown away when Joey admitted to dropping a hot steamy brown in the shower. Yeah. And then physically picking up with his bare hands and tossing it in the toilet. What's even more perplexing is that minutes after admitting shitting in the shower three times in his life, he said, he is quoted to have said, this is true, you have to be an animal to shit on an airplane. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it made my dad boner flaccid when I heard this. I was confused and disturbed. I had to change my pronoun. Why does he think browning in a plain bathroom is so repulsive, but full on shitting in the shower and picking up with your bare hands is not? I love the podcast. I always look forward to Joey's stories. Please piss on me and beat me. Try it out. Chris from Kansas. Oh my God. Um, that's a new that's a new greeting. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that was hilarious. Piss on me. Try yeah, it. Yeah, try it out. <laughs> Try it out. <laughs> Try it out is Piss the best me. part of that Beat whole me. thing. Try it out. Come over here. Um, you guys all on black guys want to fucking fuck oh, real good. My God. Right? That is just. <laughs> you want to fuck me? Come over. You want to get out of prison? You got friends? Get in my building? Try it out. You want to fuck a piss on me? Try it out. Seriously, Jeez. quite only as fuck, man. I'm looking for hardcore guys. I mean it. I want to do it. And I want to Jesus. deliver it. I'm a hot, fuck white trash. Come dump. Let's fuck. <laughs> God, he's also like trying to say so much that he's like tripping over his own words. He's, he's like, so, so I'm excited. Just like, just fuck, just going to try to from my fuck me. I mean, it's really, really fired yeah. up for it. He's so excited to answer the email question about Joey. It's because it's a lunatic person you're asking to think rationally. Yeah. Only somebody that crazy will go like, yeah, I pick up shits in my shower, throw them into the toilet, but shitting on the plane. Of course, he's not a logical human being. Well, Joey's got his own code yeah. that makes sense to him, guys. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and which is I, what's amazing about him. Well, I, to be fair, I think every human has their own sense of what's decent and what's not, and that's yeah. just Joey's logic. It totally. just adds up yeah. that way. Yeah, yeah. You know, then again, you know, I, I think I think shitting on a plane is horrendous. Then again, picking up a loaf of shit and throwing it from the shower into the toilet's pretty gnarly, too. I don't know. Oh, yeah, that's true. Oh, God. Um, I, gotta tell, I had such a messy brown the other day, and I was so thankful for our bidets 
so thankful. They really are amazing. Do you have days where you're like, God, I, how did we even wipe before It's like this? the downside of, of thinking about Hawaii. I'm like, well, oh, no. I won't be able to wash my ass every, every time. <laughs> wow. I really love it. You know what's interesting? Um, I was talking to you the other day about when I was pregnant with Ellis, how I could really smell things, like mm-hmm. you know, that pregnant lady smell. And I remember when you would fart, I could smell the layers to it like it, some of it was nutty some That's of it so cool earthy That's so cool i could smell the oak tones i could smell the cool. the tonal qualities cool. Cool. the cool. fruit cool. 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 <laughs> and then you go yeah you're like a fart sommelier yeah and i thought what a neat what a neat title and somebody out there is a fart sommelier yeah you are what do you mean somebody out there <laughs> you are you're a fart sommelier only if i'm pregnant because that's that's like a pregnant lady's superpower is their smell yeah, but no, you you are a fart someone, yeah. F A R T. I will say that when I go take when I go in the bathroom after you've taken a dump, yeah, your after dump smells are sweet. Oh, really? I don't know what it is, but your browns have either a very sour quality when mm-hmm. they're sick, you know, when you've eaten shellfish yeah. or something, but they're generally very sweet. It's diabetes. Yeah. <laughs> fart. Yeah. Fart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we're supposed to be joined here any moment by uh, the Somalia. great Polly Shore. The weasel. The weasel. Oh. Buddy. I gotta uh, tell you, I grew up watching him. Um, I don't know, were you watching MTV back oh, in Fuck the yeah, 80s? man. Yeah. That was nutty. He the was dude, so famous. Oh my God. That and the movies. I loved his movies. Jesus Christ. You know, my dad's favorite movie is Son-in-Law. Son-in-Law was great. Which Encino is Man. Hilarious. Encino Man was great. Which is funny because my dad obviously has that cultural divide of, you know, being like a hardcore Hungarian. Dude. Yeah. And it was so funny to always walk in on him just hysterically laughing at Polly Shore and son-in-law. It's yeah. like his, he's like, this guy is so stupid. He just loved it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so it's funny great. what foreigners really are into. You know? Let's take a quick break um, because okay. he should be here any moment. Okay, mommy. And, uh, Let's we'll, take a break. We'll go from there. Okay. All right, so that was uh, that was exactly the right time to take Perfect. a break. I mean, I timed that shit out perfectly. Mm-hmm. And I have to say, he was on time. So mm-hmm. um, we're here with the great Polly Shore. Thanks Get for coming out. over, man. This is exciting. What the fuck, I haven't seen man? you since Tommy gave you a paid regular spot. <laughs> <laughs> I know, we keep missing that's each other. That's hilarious. But no, I, I, I've seen you around once in a while, but that's hilarious. It's yeah. pretty surreal, man. Yeah, it's yeah, pretty surreal really, yeah. that you're here. No, I mean, uh, for both of us, because... Yeah. We both like we both grew up in the MTV era because mm. you and I were talking once in the green room at the store about you know a lot of the stuff you've done. But even with the movies and everything, mm. if you go back to people that grew up with like MTV as like the cool thing, mm. dude, the VJs thing is oh the craziest. God. Like for people th- that are I don't know under thirty listening or watching right now, they don't they have no idea what MTV yeah. was. MTV was the only cool outlet there was it was like there's there's like there's the network shows there's like a couple cable things there's only like fucking but it wasn't 30 cool channels. like whatever no. was cool was mtv and i think Polly, you tapped into it like with the weasel it was mm. like the that's fucking, not how you say it by the way it's, it's the uh, weasel. <laughs> it's hilarious Dude. no it was like you know it's it's like a viral video. It's like, you know, I did a Stephen Miller video, I don't know, a couple of months ago, and it just, it took off. And then you do another video, and it doesn't take off. And it's like MTV, everything lined up for me, and every, everything lined up for what was happening at the time. I mean, MTV was very East Coast. If you think back, it was like, you know, Ken Ober, and and, and I don't know, I mean, fuck. There's Downtown some, Julie Brown. Down to, it was like Downtown East Julie Coast, Brown East Coast, and then yeah. Dr. Dre I, and Ed Lover, the yeah. other Dr. Dre. Yeah, and then I was sitting there. I'm like, fuck, I got to get on there. And then it just, you know, I don't so, want to break down the whole story. But once I got on there, it was something that was completely different. And and the timing for me, I was developing my stand-up. I was 17 when I first started doing stand-up. And then, and then my timing, I think I was like 20 when I got on. I mean, you have to understand something. Wow. Yeah, I was on MTV on, in my see, 20s. That's funny. In my that's 20s. Weird. That's yeah. why your balls are drained. <laughs> There must have been so, so much, much box thrown at you. in the streets. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so wait a minute. Yeah, you start so, doing stand up? So yeah, my 20s, yeah. Wait, no. And well, my movies, all my movies was in my 20s. It's not like I did my movies in my 30s. My career like started to go, you know, down when I like had my run mm-hmm. in uh in my 30s. 
Okay. You know what I mean? That's after all do the you, movies and all the all the stuff. Like that's when I stopped getting offers and all that shit. Yeah. Do, do, do offers stop because of like a bad like because movies the movie business is real crazy mm. in that it's like just like in stand up it's like ticket sales driven. I think I think I just didn't do what Dave Chappelle did, which was he stopped while he was ahead. Uh huh. For me, you know what I mean. And this should be a learning lessons to everyone out there. When your stock is high, like back off. You know, do, see, I, get the yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like stop, yeah. like, like for yeah. instance, like I could have stopped after Son-in-Law. Yeah. You know what I mean? My dad's favorite movie, by the way. Uh, we just talked about this fantastic. Before. It's yeah. hilarious. It's a fun. It's, thank yeah. you, yes. by the way. Thank yeah. you. Your he dad's got good taste. It. Yeah, loves, yeah. It. it is yeah, hilarious. It's a fun. It's, it's a, a great movie. You made a but, lot of great movies. Yeah, I made I made some really fun movies. You I like I liked I like and I see my movies now and I love all of them. But my point is, is that I wasn't thinking. All I wanted to do was work. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, you yeah, like yeah. And like in they're it. like, oh, you're gonna star in a movie and it's gonna be about you're gonna be on jury duty and there's gonna be Stanley Tucci's in it and you got all these great <laughs> actors in it right. and and you know Tia Carrera off of Wayne's World and blah blah. And I'm like, fuck, that sounds good. Of course, jury duty sounds hilarious. Right. But uh, you know, I didn't work good with the director. The the produ- uh, the script was weird. The you know everything was, like didn't line up. It wasn't yep. like it lined up on my other films. And because I was a bu- my name was above the title, I fucking suffered from it. Right. You know what I mean. By the way, I've yeah. always wanted to ask this to somebody with your like with the experience of doing that. When you're making a movie, do you? It's have, the best thing in the world. I, I imagine it's that part. literally the best thing in the world. Do you ever have any sense when the movie's being shot? Do you sense like this is not going to go well? Like, do you feel that on the ones that kind of you do? Yeah, kind of. But then you also, it's like when I did, I, I bring back the Stephen Miller video just because it was my last recent thing that did well. Like I did that and I didn't know I was going to wind up on CNN being talking to like one of the CNN news anchors. That was really funny. For so, people that don't know though, Stephen Miller uh, works in the Trump administration. He's one of the uh, presidential aides and he came out and like, basically took the mic one day Mm. Uh, this is on the way of spicer going out and really talked a lot of shit to a lot of the reporters hilarious and uh and then (laughs) and then uh paulie did like a parody of it where he had like the the fucking horseshoe the the, the bald head and yeah it's very funny man it was yeah thank you thank you where can people see that it's a funny or die yeah it's not funny or die but my point is is that you do things and you you know you, you can't control all the other antics that happens so you can just do what you do and then and then it's like it's in God's hands. Yeah. You know, as far as a hit. You just don't know. You don't know when you have a no. hit coming. No. You don't then, know. But in retrospect, do you feel like you would have strategized in, in terms of like Absolutely. Hey, I'll, just, I'll take My this time agents off. and managers told me not to do it. Oh My, really? Of course. They're like you know, even when I did in the army, now they told me not to do that because I I had got a I had signed a three picture deal at Disney, and I did Encino Man first. I did Son in Law, and the next they Jeffrey Katzenberg, who was running Disney at the time, wanted me to do another movie there. And New Line came to me with this other film called Totally London, mm-hmm. which was basically me playing an au pair in London. Oh my uh-huh. god, that sounds which would, funny! Though. You know, like Polly Poppins, sure. like where I yeah. go, yeah. you know, where I go yeah. over there, you know, with my my slang and whatever it is, and I live with this kind of English family, and and we wanted to do that. But because I was in bed with Disney and Jeffrey Katzenberg, they wouldn't get me out of that deal. So Jeffrey said, shut up. You're going to do this movie. And that's when we did In the Army Now. And In the Army Now did well. Like now it's made its money after years of it being out there. But at the time, it didn't do as good as the other movies did. So that was like, and then I cut my hair and I was so known for my hair. Yes. Yeah, that's you know what the I mean? thing. Yeah. Like, can, we talk, the hair. can we please talk about that? That's why we got to cut Dalia's hair. <laughs> we got to take it off because he's getting too much babes, bro. <laughs> that doesn't work for me. You know what I mean? Too many babes. Yeah, that yeah. doesn't work for me. Yeah. So can we talk about that? About the week, the weasel, because yeah. he, the I feel like the weasel. You could have found that guy anywhere on the sunset sunset strip in that era of of time, because it was like the the metal clubs. You remember, like the sunset strip was kind of yeah. that dude. Very well, could have been living there. Yeah. Like, how did you? How did he come to you? Well, Wait, but first of all, before you even answer that, can what? we start so that people know that Paulie. Like where he grew up. And oh my so, god! So, yeah. just the so craziest life ever. Yeah. Like they, they <laughs> like so that they know the background. Your your mother, Mitzi Shore, um, the, the oh my god! Oh, yeah, oh. it just goes oh out my. when you mention my mom. I know. <laughs> just Jesus. Trust. Leave me. Don't dude, don't bring me in on this bullshit. Leave me alone. <laughs> she didn't pass. I don't want to feel with that, that shit. <laughs> so, hilarious. But like Paul, Paulie's mom, you know, ran the comedy store. 
and Polly basically grew up at the at comedy the store. store with and his dude. dad's a comic. And, yes, of course. Yeah. And and uh, I met your dad. And and uh, there's, you know, he's got Sam Kinison babysitting him and <laughs> crazy and Rodney and just just craziest. Rodney was the best. Really? Oh my god, so hilarious. Just he was always. The best. Yeah. Oh yeah, he was the best. I believe that. Yeah, he was the best and sweetheart and funny and so all that stuff. To yeah. Christina's point. Do you, at an early age, because it's almost, it seems normal to you, do you go like, I'm going to do this? I'm going to do what all these people are well, doing? Well, I have two brothers and a sister, and they're not into it, so it's like they grew up in it as well. I mean, uh -huh. you guys know, you guys are straight comics. You guys are hardcore comics. Like, you don't choose it, it chooses you. Like, like you live fucking in the valley. Like, you guys have to drive to the comedy store. Do you, do you think you like driving to the comedy store? No. <laughs> yeah. But you fucking know once you get up there, you're going to have that feeling and that, you yeah. know, that, yeah. that and especially yeah. like you guys got to yeah. drive to the fucking airport. Yeah. And fly to, sh you know, all over America. Do you like that? No. no. no so. But you know what's going to happen when you get there. Right. People are going to be there for you yeah. and your heart is going to be open. You're going to feel this like stress reliever. You know what I mean? So, yeah. is your first so time on stage do, yeah. at the store? No. I stayed away from it for about two years. But you were like, did your yeah. mom know because you were I doing knew, it? Well, I started when I was like 17. I started when I, I went to Beverly Hills High School. And I was like in, uh, I was in, it was in high school. It was at the beginning of 12th grade. And all my friends were going to um, college. They were taking the SAT papers. And I'm like, okay, now I got to start. So I just started. Angel Salazar actually wrote my first joke. Check, Check it, it out. out. Check it out. He, he wrote my first joke. So uh, <laughs> so he got me. He got, you know, these. Com I got these comics to start kind of writing me jokes because I didn't know how to write jokes. And then my dad took me to my first gig. He did? It, so you had yeah, your dad in, with you? Yeah, my dad That's took me to. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it was in Culver City. Yeah. did you feel pressure because it was your father or did you feel supported because it was your father? Do you know what I mean? It can be either way. Um. No, he was cool. You know, he was cool. My dad was cool. You know, but I always like, you know, it was it was just one of those things that I always knew I was going to do. And like, OK, now I'm going to do it. But I stayed away from the store for two years. And then there was a club called the Alley Cat Bistro. And that was in No, that was where I, that was my first. Uh, no, the L.A. Cabaret was a club oh, in the Valley. That. Do you mm -hmm. remember it? Yeah, it's not it's not there anymore, though. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't. Well, I mean, that was one. so long ago. It's like Encino. Yeah. yeah. So a guy named Ray Bishop, who used to own it, Argus Hamilton, used to get me spots there. And then I worked with Jamie at the Laugh Factory for years. Really? Yeah. So I stayed away from the store. And then the first time I went on for my mom, I showcased for her. And then... God, um, what kind of pressure was oh that? Like, was that terrifying or Yeah, no? it was a nightmare. It was. Yeah, <laughs> it was a nightmare. Because I also figured you were either going to be like, no, nah, it's no big deal. Or yeah, it's a fucking nightmare. No, it was fucking terrible. I was yeah. 19. You know what I mean? And Did she tell you? Well, let me finish. Okay, let okay. Me finish. Right. okay. <laughs> no, uh, no. So, so Paul Mooney and Lou and uh, Paul Mooney and Louis Anderson were sitting next to her, in the booth, in oh her booth. God. So I go on stage. It's packed. Obviously, there's like a wall full of comics. I don't want to say they hate my guts, but it's Mitzi's son, you know. So they're like in the way back. So I'm oh, like, oh, I'm yeah. like on stage. I'm doing these really bad jokes that Angel t told me <laughs> wrote for me. I grew up in Beverly Hills. My mom's in Mexico, whatever. Yeah, whatever yeah, my yeah. jokes are. I say my jokes, no laps. So oh. at the end, I break out and start pop locking. I have this boom box. We play Freakazoid. And oh, I put this mask God. on and I because I was good at pop locking. Yeah. So I started popping. And then after I went off stage, I ended good. I went, I'm like, how did I do it? She's like, stick with the dancing. <laughs> My mom said, stick with the dancing. And then she's like, get away from me. It was like pretty bad, yeah. So like, Gosh. it's not till I became famous on MTV and I was like drawing people in the main room that she like made me a paid regular. Really? <gasps> yeah. Jesus. Yeah, okay, like so I literally had to stay away. And then I worked wow. with Kennison for a long time. But what about- What did you, wait, hold on. What did you do with Kennison? What do you mean you worked with him? You opened for him? Yeah, I opened for him. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That was so, cool. so is that the birth of the weasel? Is, yeah. How does the weasel is, come is about? Is that the dancing? I have to the... say, it was kind of like uh, all my friends used to call me the weasel. They did. Yeah, like when I was younger, and then uh, a lot of comics like Jackson Purdue, mm -hmm. he used to say, "You're a weasel," mm -hmm. and then I was always like, "Weasel!" Like I'm yeah. the one that kind of came up with that. And then I was like, if someone could, if if that, that noise can actually occur, what would that noise sound like? Yeah. And I was like. You know, yeah. that's where the, the thing came. And then I started like pausing between my words. That, and that was on MTV. That was that, awesome. see, Yeah, that was like, thing. I would God. look in the camera and be like, check out this video, bro, because yeah. it's going to be May. 
Major. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I start grinding. The, grind the grindage. Yeah. Major you know grindage. I mean? Grindage. Yeah. And then I would just start yeah, making bro. shit up. Right. And then it was like my own language to the audience. Wow. And then, and then from there, you know, I was like kind of had my own slang to the audience. No wheezing the juice. That yeah. was from Encino Man. No that wheezing was the juice. Like, juice. Yeah. juice. So, <laughs> that's so, so that's how it took off. The thing about it is like as a uh. kid too, you know, like uh, somebody who's a little bit older than you and is cool. It's so cool. And then and then when you learn slang cuz you're as a kid it's like what does that mean? Yeah. So mm. like it was hearing the slang on MTV but then in the movies too that you're like, "Oh mm. man." And then you, you do it on the playground, course, you, you pretend it, to be Polly Shore. You do it at school like yeah, we're all doing crazy. Polly Shore at school. Man. It was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, it was cool. Yeah. That's wild, yeah, it man. Was dope. Um, so, but, it was like the best. I mean, it was like people are always like, "Well, oh, you always hear people like, "Oh, why do you talk about your past on?" Not just me, just people in general. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, sure. You, know, you live your past. I'm like, well, you didn't live my past. Yeah. You know what I mean? My past was insane. Yeah, of course. You know? yeah, it was yeah. it was pretty fucking cool. So Can you've been on a ride that most people never you know, will. Never will. Can I ask you? Because I had my mother's gone now, but mm. I had a mother who very much disapproved of me and never really mm. gave me the thumbs up, mm. the approval I so mm. desired. Like, mm. do you think there's a time that your mother saw your career and and went like, yeah, you did it. Like, yeah, when I started dressing like her. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Man, that looks good on him. I wish I would have had a daughter. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, when I became famous on MTV and I was, fu- I took her to the MTV Awards. Okay. You know, I was with dating a porno star. You were? So she loved yeah. that. Yeah, she was like. Who were you <laughs> dating? Is it a well known? Her name was Savannah. Oh, I know Savannah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's popular on the Stern Show, yeah. Don't they? Don't they play? She's been dead for a long time. She oh, killed never mind. herself. Oh my God! You? I'm sorry. No. Oh, but probably. May, hope. I hope not. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Different Savannah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, no. This. This was 1994. So. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, yeah. My mom was cool. Obviously, like so liberal and so like whatever my mom never judged and that's why ow oh, that's what i loved about my mom and that's like me like i don't judge people like if you're a heroin addict oh cool, cool that's your thing like you know what i mean like yeah. people have to go through what they have to go through in life and and my mom was such you know the, my mom was such an artist like she was so she, she her heart was the comics that's where her that's where it come and it actually started with my dad because my dad met her when he was touring in the 50s and my dad was touring, and, and he and he did a, a a camp. He did a it was a summer camp in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. And my dad was the comic there. And my mom used to my mom used to type up his jokes because she was because she was the assistant for the owner, mm. the owner of the camp. And she'd be like, "Do this one, do that." So it was like a natural thing. Yeah. So you she know was what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. She so, was so that was her thing. Yeah. Did um? Oh, man, that's, that's so well. Now I don't know if you've been asked this a million times. So forgive me if you have. But do you have any opinion on the Showtime series? I'm dying up here. I mean, um, I you know I I told people a million times exactly my take on it. For um, people, but, just so people yeah. that don't know, yeah. it's basically I mean it's executive produced by Jim Carrey, and it's you know it's a play on the store. <laughs> what do right? they call? <laughs> Your mom's character, so I forgot. Hot, Will, hot Goldie. Winnie, hot Winnie, <laughs> yeah. Winnie like or something. Something Goldie. ridiculous. I think you're right. It's Goldie. Yeah, Goldie. yeah I, yes, So it's yes. like a woman running the club. I mean, it's obviously yes. supposed to be symbolize Mitzi, but sorry. So just so people know. So when I see, I, I tell every time I see Eric Griffin, I was like, dude, I'm suing you, bro. <laughs> like you're playing, you're playing it wrong. I'm coming after you. Uh-huh. And he's like, it's not me. I'm like, dude, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Attorneys are gonna you're gonna be getting a call. Yeah. <laughs> <Right here. laughs> oh God, I'm showing his pants. I'm like, Please no. No, uh, no. I guess it's you know. I mean, Jim Carrey. You know, he it's his take on the whole thing. Right. right. So it's not my take. It's not my mom's take. It's not my dad's take. It's his take. That's true. So that's the first thing. The second thing, I I look at it. I look at it at two two things. I look at number one. Do I like this as a show? Mm-hmm. You know, you're just kind of sitting there and watching it. And I think it's kind of cool because I like kind of historical shows. I like sure. shows from the 60s, 70s, 80s. I like that that era. And then you look at it as a show show, mm, not really feeling it that much. You know what I mean? I'm not yeah. really connecting with people. Okay. Yeah, Does that I, make sense? To, yeah, like, absolutely. Like, I like, I think they're all good actors. Yes. But let's too. be honest, they're not all good act. I mean, not to, di- <laughs> not to disrespect any of them, but they're yeah. not real actors. They're comedians that are acting. Uh-huh. Well, so, to does their, that make sense? It, here, yeah, and I, I, 
because I, mean, I watched the whole good, series because I'm in love. I love the show. Like it's, it's, it's about stand up, and I know these people. I think it, they made it too heavy. It was too fucking dark. It was like I'm gonna kill myself if I don't get on the main but stage. But imagine tonight. if like, that no. was done with real good actors, then that would be pretty kind of cool. I no? guess, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if it's the acting or the fact that. I mean, imagine it was if like so younger heavy. Sean Penns were doing it. Like Sean. who are the, who was like our generation of Sean Penns and like yeah. and, and Robert Downey and those type of guys. Right, right, right. You know where they kind of really become. So you think they should have cast? Like, I think. I don't know. Maybe Ra- Ryan Gosling. Yeah, mm. I like him. I don't know though. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's a fair take. I mean, I like I like your take. It's a very honest take, and I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Yeah. I mean. Um, but I'm happy that it's got picked up for a second season it's because very cool. it's cool Ooh, for we'll the guys. See. You know, it's cool for the guys. A, yeah, when they got they got a, they got a gig. Yeah. You know, what I mean, at the end of the day, you get to fucking show up and act. Yeah. For fucking three months on a yeah. show. Yeah. yeah What's great. better awesome. than that? It's great. You know yeah. what I mean? So. It's the best. Do you um man that's yeah do you um so how did the... he doesn't know what to ask me I think he's finished I, no I no I, 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 I whoa I'm, bro I'm, go I'm easy later. weasel uh, weasel <laughs> ah, 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 ah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. You uh, can cut that part out if no, you want. No, no, no. Okay. Of course not. Cool, right? You slow it down. So wait, I want to know, <laughs> right. how did the Stephen Miller thing come about? When I mean, obviously that happened, but how mm. did you do it? They just parody? asked me to do it. They just they just thought of you. I do, fu- I do Funny or Die stuff a lot, so I'm always doing stuff for them. So they just, Sean Boyle, who's a friend of mine over there, works with Mike Farah. They're just, hey, you know, Stephen Miller just did this thing on CNN. We want you to play the blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay. And the next day I went in, did it, and they put it up, you know? Yeah. What yeah. about you guys? How did you guys? I mean, this is an interesting thing. Well, <laughs> I no, know it is. No, you're right because it's not supposed to work. I mean, you mean you've saw you've seen it with your parents, like two people in well, the yeah, same business. Well, yeah, but she's not. A, Mom wasn't a comic. You guys are full on, really good co- comedians that are right. successful, and you're working. This is a sitcom. You got to develop it into a show <laughs> for sure. We're trying. We're working on. Oh it. God, yeah. it's great. <laughs> Finance it yourself, though. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Okay. Yeah, do what Louis C.K. did, except for the, the, the other, other party stuff. said Marie and <laughs> 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 No, because you can produce it, get a young producer in there and just pay for it half half and then just shoot whatever it is you want, edit it, we'll make talk, it go. We'll talk sizzle, after this. Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle it up, man. Sizzle well, I think Tommy and I work because we started at the same time. Oh, that's cute, Tommy. Yeah, he did a little baby. Yeah. 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 Not yeah. Tom, Tom yeah. Segura. <laughs> Tom Segura. <laughs> that's Segur. a man's name. Yeah. Yeah. But we started, I mean, literally since he was 23, I watched him. I think I met you like when you the fifth time you went on stage or Probably, something. Yeah. And same here. So we we're we're rooting for each other. It's different than cool. like coming in at different levels. What about the what Weeze? Is the Weeze gonna Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, we're talking about that? you guys no, for a second. <laughs> we're talking about the Weasel. Is he gonna fucking Did you when your baby Are came when your baby came out, did you have did three minutes? <laughs> Grab the umbilical cord. Well, I just landed and boys my head deformed. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> huh? That's cool. I hope though. not. I hope not. Oh my god. There's definitely a show there. No, I think uh, you're right. I mean, for sure, yeah. dude. Of course. Yeah, there's a show. But who would, like, on the road, who opens for who? That's we the, don't do the road together. That, I think that's like been Natasha, the secret. Natasha and, uh, what's his I name? I don't know how they do it, Moshe. Yeah. But we've always had a pact that we didn't do, we didn't do that dynamic because that's trouble. Yeah. Better to keep it separate. Really? I think so. Well, that's the beginning. We always thought so. That's the first episode. And yeah. then you guys do, and it's a disaster. You guys are just filing for divorce. No, and you get back, no divorce. No, no, it's, a, it's, a no good, it's a good angle. It's, it's a good like angle. very Larry Care. Sanders. Yeah. You know what I like, mean? So it's we'll very, never work uh, together again. That's the end of the first episode. Wait, yeah. here's the movie premise. It's 2018, and what's the weasel doing now? I think that would be great. Well, the weasel's well, working on things. What would the weasel be doing now? Because if you, were... you're, you're, you got a 50th I, coming up. Yeah, I got a 50th birthday coming up. And yeah. you're going to do a book? I should. Oh, my God. Or a doc? I got so many things. I got two documentaries. I have, um, I have uh, about three years ago, I did Stands Alone, which was on Showtime, which is a straight doc. And now I have a doc series based off of that. And that's a six part series. Mm-hmm. And I finished that. It's fucking, I think, not to pat myself, but I think it's the best thing I've ever done. It's very emotional. I moved my mom out of the house. Oh, it's shit. It's fucking heavy, dude. It's heavy. Excuse me, I just burped. Yeah, it was sorry. really girthy. Sorry. I heard uh, it sorry. down here. Is the Let Weeze going to put a ring on this finger or what? Like, are you going <laughs> to... With Whitney Cummings. You're going to marry yeah. her? I'm trying to, but really? she, keeps the, she keeps ignoring me. Are you into her? I just want to get her pregnant. Yeah. She's do really it. into animals. You just have to start I, liking I'm a animals. Weasel. What do you mean? <laughs> you are Dude, get her a horse. Yeah. I have a horse. Cu- oh, I won't say that. <laughs> um, 
I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm. It's like bungee jumping for me. Like, I, I kind of like being alone. I mean, I have a girlfriend now. I've been seeing her for a while. Okay. We, we have a nice relationship. Good. But it's really difficult for me. You know what I mean? It's difficult for me to just be with someone. I all see the that. Time. You know, you know I, to come home. Yeah, like, I, I like know. coming home and I'm by myself. I kind of like that. Well, we were just talking about how we go away for the holidays to avoid uh, family. Mm. I don't necessarily enjoy hanging out with all my family members. Yeah. And, you know, that's just your wiring. And I respect that you know that about yourself because yeah. there are some men that aren't supposed to have families. I don't, I don't think, honestly, my dad was supposed to be a family guy. Like, he wasn't. He stuck right? around, he did his duty, but. Same with I don't my think dad. He enjoyed it. He didn't. No, really my dad like was it. miserable. And yeah. my mom was miserable. Really? My yeah. parents divorced. My parents divorced when I was three years old. Yeah. But before that, I, you know, I have a, a How many older brother. I have two brothers and a sister. But my oldest brother Scott, he's like sixty-four, mm-hmm. and my sister's like sixty-two, sixty. So it's like oh, kids. Yeah. Like, oh wow. Kids a long time. My, dude, my dad. Whoa, sorry about that. Tough. My dad's fucking ninety years old. My mom's eighty-seven. Oh. So it's like. They were doing it a long time ago, and then they stopped, and then they had me and my brother Peter. So me and Peter were pretty much raised at the store, you know what I mean, the whole time while mom was dating Argus and and dating like Danny Stone and and all these different comedians, and I was just there running around. And Argus still visits her, right? Like yeah, her, he's like very dedicated. That's what yeah, I'm, yeah that's very sweet. Yeah, it's very sweet. Hmm. He would Gary Shanley visit her too, and then he left and he passed away. No. Not mm-hmm. good. Not, no. Why are you laughing? That's not no. cool, bro. That's, a, that's politically incorrect, <laughs> bro. So. This what scene? Uh, what movie is this from? Uh, one of my favorite scenes. I forget what movie this is from. Of you, black guys who love to fuck and fuck good. If you're a hot black guy and you want to fuck me at twenty three ninety five, if you want to move in, you can move in, but you gotta fuck me. I'm... That's not my movie. It's not. <laughs> no. Oh. No? No. Oh. oh that's, that's the wrong clip. They sent us the republicist sent us the wrong yeah. trailer. I am my publicist. Oh, oh. oh. Shit. We, <laughs> really, we, got, what do you, we got fucking bamboozled. Polly, what do you think is going on in that clip? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Who I don't even know who that looked like Sandy Danto. <laughs> <laughs> who is that? Sandy uh, Danto. Sandy. Oh, uh, we don't know. It's a guy on the internet who just gave out his address and wanted black guys to come over and fuck him. And if you're out of jail, do piss on him, come on him, whatever. Try it you out. Want. Try I'm it out. I'm trying to be a little PC since it's a family show. It's mother's house. Your mom's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it's, true. It's not. You, you know what, what I mean? You want. Yeah. Um, you like <laughs> music, right? Of course. Uh, are you a fan of the show Gigolos on Showtime? <gasps> oh, mm. We haven't seen it in a while. I haven't seen it. Well, do you know what it's about? There's a bunch of male hoes. On Showtime, and it follows them around, you know, d- turning their tricks and their lives and stuff. I haven't seen it. Oh, well, one show. of the guys on there is a musician. He has a new music video out, um, and they asked us to take a look at it. <coughs> so let's, g- right, let's give us your honest it. take. Yeah. I love this song. You do? Yeah, I like the song. Okay. I don't know their version of it's a little. Oh wait, you know this? I know the song, right? It's someone else's song. I don't know. No, is it? Yeah. Oh, it's what? Wrecking Ball. Yeah. <gasps> so. Yeah. That's... Oh, yeah. he did a remake. Did a I remake. didn't know that. Got oh, good ear. Yes. Yeah, I doesn't. fell under your spell of love. No one can deny. Yeah. Don't you ever say I just walked away. I will mm. always. Are they going to start fucking or what? I know. Dude, I mean, come on already. I want them to bang her. <laughs> Vegas, baby. <laughs> that's it? That's all that's that happening? It? I came in like a wrecking ball. Okay, oh. that's cool, cool, cool. All right, anyways. <laughs> it's no Lisa, I mean, Lisa. Hap- no, I love Lisa, Lisa. Lisa. Thank you, thank you, the thank one you. I adore. Yeah. That was funny, man. That was God good. damn it. I'm a stony, crusty dude. Yeah. Like yeah that's now, was one. Lisa a real? Was it based on a real Lisa? Yeah. Hmm. Where's she now? She lives in Nashville with her kids. Damn. Yeah. Mommy. yeah. You're going to try to make a baby, though, right? I think so. Really? Yeah, I think that, that makes sense. To yeah. Me- <laughs> yeah. 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 But I keep pulling out.
No, stop. you can't no, you gotta do that. Stop, you right? gotta stop. Yeah. You gotta leave you gotta it in. You got full loads all the way inside, <laughs> yeah. encompassing the vagina. <laughs> yep. Not, yeah. Right? Can't do a half a load and then get, no. and then, and then no. Jew out. Go wait. Oh, no. I yeah. know. I don't. And you full also gotta loads. you gotta make sure she lays still there after a while. It's hard to not move. You know? Really? Put her yeah. Legs up. Yeah. Put her legs up. I heard if you do it doggy style, then it's a boy, and if it's standard, then it's a girl. Totally, totally, totally true. Is that true? <laughs> yep. So what do you guys have? We have a boy. Yeah. So you did her dog do it. Always the dog. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. So do you guys her, have sex you, in the valley? Bark. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Really? Do you 69? We were talking about people. Do people <laughs> really 69? Do you 69? <laughs> <laughs> like a thing you do once in high school and kinda. then you Long stop. time and not he's like kinda I don't do that now. Right. It's kinda weird. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, wait, what about weird. it? It's like I'm But wait, so you guys live in the valley. Why. You guys live in a valley house. So do you guys have sex in the valley and stuff? <laughs> This is cool. Like yeah. you guys got neighbors and stuff. Yeah, There's neighbors. Here. You, you know, it's totally these... suburban. No, we don't know we don't anybody. So suburban. No, we don't know. Well, it's because we have a kid. I mean, where the fuck do you raise your kid? I grew up in L.A. I grew up out here. You grew up in the valley. I did eight one eight man until awesome. I die. Birmingham. No, I went to Louisville, all girls Catholic. But mm. I had friends that went to Birmingham. Yeah. So, but, so you're in the valley. That's cool. But where yeah. are you from originally? Original. I was born in Cincinnati, but I mm. moved. I moved a lot. So I lived in a lot of Midwest. That's I lived why in he's a South comic. Florida. Yeah. Kind of and when did you problems. start? Where did you start doing your stand up? Here in LA. Which club? Uh, well, I started at like some of the bars mm -hmm. and then I got in at uh, Melrose first. The improv. Yep. You could say the improv don't in front of me. It's okay. No, I don't want it's to. Okay. I don't want to upset you. Dude, you know what's, what's crazy is when I first started working the improvs, I actually put a, I, in my contract, it was to, I put a curtain in front of me because I didn't want someone to take a picture uh, yeah. of me in front of the improv sign and show it to my mom. Yeah, sure. You know, because that was like a very big, you know, feud growing up as a kid, you know? Of course. Yeah. Very important question. Do you ever, when you take a dump, do you ever go right to the shower? Like from shit to shower? I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, why? It's not a good conversation. Why? I know. I don't know. This dude gets it's laid like, all the time. You think he wants to put that I don't out there? Put that. It's a bad energy. Yeah. So she's you're talking saying, about. So not, you're saying she's talking about not even wiping. No, because not she's done, no, she's done those jokes before on stage. Yeah, I know. What are you talking about? No, she's, I have done not. Some shit jokes before. I Super like poopy. Yeah, yeah, but I'm just nasty. saying Farting. this is this is your mom's house. We have to be real to the brand. Yeah, you know who? Um, oh my god! <laughs> you know who I sat next to yesterday? Who on my flight sat directly next to me was Kenyon Martin. Who's that? I'll tell you exactly who that is. Do you know who that is? Um, it didn't get away, you know what I'm saying? They made a, <laughs> a, a, a play at the end. It was a questionable travel call, you know what I'm saying? It didn't go our way. And they made a Which decent play, you know what I'm saying? Team? I had a good look. You know, MC had a better look. You know what I'm saying? I mean, a lot for of, me, you know I always just think of him as University of Cincinnati. But he played in the NBA for, I don't know, a dozen years. He was a, I forget, a bit of a, a journeyman, right? He had a few teams. Um, let me look up his... So he, he's he's retired now, but I'm saying he's. Uh, let's see what his his career was. He had big old fuck six nine. Um, he played for the Nets, the Nuggets, the Clippers, yeah, Bucks, a uh, whole bunch of teams. Jersey, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, you, but, do you like sports? No, don't. don't yeah, but he's so one of the all, because it's the it. one of the all time. You know what I'm saying? Jim? So it was just. <laughs> I'm saying they made a, they, they made one more plays than we did, man. It wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't like the game got out of control. I'm saying they came out with a lot of injury, which we knew they was gonna do. I'm saying we fought. I mean, there's a <laughs> lot of them. Man. You know what I'm saying? 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 I'm saying they. I'm saying they. For for you know what I'm saying? We always like to like highlight you know the, the really great. You know what I'm saying? So um, yeah, I think that's the open for your show. You know what I'm you saying? You guys talk about you're in the kitchen, you're doing the kid <laughs> thing, and it just turns into like, look, we're getting paid a lot of money, you know, and you're like, yeah, but that's the one thing we talked about. We would never work together. You know oh. what I mean? And then finally you just say, oh, fuck it, let's do idea, it. Actually. Let's just do it. And then it's all this angst, and you go up there and something bad happens. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then like that's the end of the second act, and then the third act is like, you know, you kind of deal with it, and then, like, you know, you start. I, I like this premise, because that, that is the one thing we've chosen. Because, you know, once you do a reality show, it kills the marriage. No, you're not reality. Never. It's a straight no, script. But I'm saying there's yeah. a reason we've never done certain things. I, I feel like yeah. maybe unconsciously we knew But the thing that's bad. cool about it is you guys are both really talented, and you guys can, like, do something different. Because no one's done it. No one's done it successfully, right? Done what? The, 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 well, the, 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 the husband and the wife that are both 
true stand-ups. That's right. right. I mean, I right? Know, Is there that's anyone? True. Well, I mean, okay, Lucy and Ricky, they weren't stand They're no, like that's vaudeville. Not. They came out of vaudeville. Who's the, uh, you're right, there's not been two married true stand-ups that have done no. I think it would be great. You just tweak it. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a good idea. It but you guys already idea. know this idea, but you should just get it done. I think it'd be great. We're working on it, man. We really are working we on really it. We really are. Yeah. It's really, it's yeah. hot um, my... So the reason she asked you about 69 is this. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you want to talk about shitting and black guys' penises yes! in 69? Yeah. Now you're what in about 69 ing all the way over the black guys' penis? <laughs> Possible. Have you yeah. ever seen that website, blackened.com? No. The what? You're talking about black penises and you haven't seen blackened.com? No. Wait, it's a website dedicated to black guys having sex with white girls. Look you how mean, excited you she mean, got. You mean blacked. Oh, okay. black. I thought it was black and Tom. Yeah. Look I at know. you correct. Bla- okay, man. so it's black.com. Yeah. Bla- wait. Is black. that part of the dog fart network? <laughs> oh my Maybe. God, what is happening? Maybe. Uh, is this dark web? Is this stuff I'm. But it's I've just heard these stories. Uh huh. It's basically a website that's just get it dedicated to black guys having sex with white girls, but they're hot white chicks. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, they, and they have sex with the girls in the butt. Yeah. Too. Oh, and they, the guys all have tiny little dicks. It's the yeah. funniest thing. It's really like it's like a new take on it. They're like, you think black guys normally have big dicks? Not over here. And then that's why they can fit so many in them. I, Polly, how many women? I don't want to ask the number, but I'm I want to ask. Like I feel like how many? Do what you was think? it like in the? It must in have the, been in crazy. the MTV. What was crazier, MTV era or like mo- like movies after that? What well, it was a combination? But like, is, is there is one lane of it? crazier than the other or no well, they both i was on mtv f- during the whole time i was doing the movies oh, okay okay it was like mixed yeah i was doing albums yeah hbo were the remotes movies the whole thing the yeah. craziest like when you go the to what? like daytona to do an mtv thing is that yeah let's talk about spring break yes yeah, daytona break. shit That's that must be... have been off the chain it was the best <laughs> you're like yeah. i can't come anymore there's no <laughs> more in me i can't <laughs> no, I had this friend of mine, Tony DeSanto, I'm going to see in New York. You guys know Tony? Yes. You know Tony, yeah, right? He's yeah. at the store, right? Is he? No, he's not. Am a, I crazy? No, he's a producer. Oh, why he's do I know his name then? What did he produce? He produced, he, he ran, he ran. Uh, Men from jail, homeless. Or, um, Wait, I do know the name thug, now. Let me look come. him up. He in, ran MTV. Yeah, for a while. yeah, because I was Free on Road ride. Rolls. That's why yeah, I know that name. So you know Tony. Okay. Yes. So Tony was, um, he was like a... Sandy a, a, Danto is who I'm thinking. Sorry, go ahead. He was Tony's, uh, uh, he was a producer at Spring Break when we were doing the, the Chillin' with the Wii shows, <laughs> right? And um, he, they used to come to my room, the producers would come in my room to uh, prep me. You know what I mean? To kind of like, you know, they just, hey, yeah, this yeah. we're going to do, he's on the show, blah, blah, blah. And he came in my room and, you know, girls were in there already from the night before. And then he come out, and then I'm like, wait, dude, I got to, I got, this is, he says this, so don't think I'm a pig for saying this. I didn't say this. He says that, uh, Polly, blah, 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 there's a splint on my dick or something. Like, I had a splint on my dick. That's what he said. I don't remember saying that. (laughs) Ask him. But, you know. And was your game, did you have a game set up where you'd be like, hey, like, Go, I didn't go have tell to have what's up. No, he was, he was a was fucking weasel. weasel. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, but weasel. I'm saying if you yeah. eyeballed someone and you're working. This was you like, it. Hey, babe. That's what's it? What's up? That's it. That's Wait, it. that. Yeah. Yeah, hold on. Let's hey, it. babe. What's up? <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> that's, that's it. it. <laughs> wow. Uh, for those of you who can't see this, he just literally rubbed my arm and went, hey, babe. That's how it And I felt the electricity of the weasel. I felt it. And let's just find a room. Let's go. That's it. Just get into a room. God, that's so fucking nutty. No, it was... um. It was cool, you know. It was a uh, spring break. You had uh, who was that? Lenny Kravitz was there. Uh, Rodney was down there. Kennison was down there. Cheap Trick was down there. Black Crow, Stone Temple Pilots, um, You're Fine Young it. Cannibals. Oh, I love you know? those guys. And it was just like you know, it was live. Yeah, that's what was cool. And it was an event. Spring Break was the biggest event for MTV. So yeah. you had hundreds of thousands of kids going going there just to oh be on God. Spring Break. You mm-hmm. know, it was like nuts, and and it was live. So it's like you know, if you fucked up, you fucked up. You know, your whole sh- you know VJ shit. Yeah, you know, you just that's how it but was. But did you love the gig? It was a great gig. It's the right? best. Yeah, yeah, because it was like you felt like a rock star. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So it was. Uh, I was so lucky. It was very fortunate. You that's know? very cool. Yeah. Um, okay, so the reason that she's bringing up sixty nine, it's an important reason. Okay. So when my dad turned seventy this summer, my mother, who's a foreigner, she's from Peru, 
She, uh, we that's why you have white stuff over your nose. It is. That's totally <laughs> it. Hey. She, uh, <laughs> we asked her, we said, Dad's turning 70 tomorrow. Will you 69 him before Hilarious. he turns 70? And it became like a joke at the dinner table because she also didn't know what that meant, right? So it was like a funny thing and people started doing it. So anyways, we told our audience about that and they have been recording their families asking the same question and sending in the oh clips. Oh my God, that's so hilarious. We have some, here so we go. Good. Oh, that's hey, hilarious. Man. That's so gross. How, how old did you turn today? 69. 69? Um, so before you turn 70, like on the last night, are you gonna try to 69 one more time? I don't think so. With what, my dogs? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to keep them jeans high and tight? <laughs> so, All right. that's Alec and Bailey. That's fantastic. He, she had a good attitude. She did have a good attitude. Some moms it, are they, like, they are mad. shut it down. Yes. Yeah. Oh, hey, Grandma. Oh, that's hilarious. Grandma. 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 Grandma, are you going to 69 moving to celebrate? John! <laughs> it's your 69th. See, somebody yelled at him, John! That, so that, yeah, was, that like, was like, stop. Yeah, yeah stop that doing that. They're reprimanding, yeah. they're for, reprimanding the, for the fun. Yeah. Stop having guys, fun. to celebrate his last night being 69, mm -hmm. do you think you guys are 69? Can you not? Grady, great. <laughs> Grady, great. <laughs> no, no, man. No, this this crew for you and me. <laughs> Dad, what do you think? I don't think so. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> okay. There you go. Because he don't eat nothing with hair on it. That is fantastic, Katie. Um, That's a good one. Thank you, Katie, for saying that. We don't usually have the women uh, record. They've been no. guys have been sending it in, but no. Katie sent it in. So thank you for that. Her dad don't eat nothing with hair on it. That was a good response, that actually. A good response. It's a good mom. They, they're in back. Alabama. I, I, don't, I don't know. It doesn't say. Then <laughs> mm. uh, um, in here. Bob? Do you think? For Dad's 70th birthday to celebrate, you guys are going to 69. What do you think, Dad? What the fuck is wrong with you? I love you guys. Those are my favorite responses, yeah. I think, when they're just like, why are you being a child? Like, why are you doing this juvenile? Stop having you should have pushed him a little. No, Dad, for real. <laughs> I know. Right? Be hilarious. No, for real, you guys should. It's the last time. <laughs> don't you think? Yeah. Here's Benji. <laughs> So okay, right. on Dad's 69th birthday, mm. the last day, I mean, Look at the, sorry, guy in the, the last yellow. day of his 69th year, right before he turned 70. Oh, we did that. Exactly. What? Are you guys going to go out with a bang in 69 one last time? I don't know. Do you even know what that is? Yeah. Do you do it? Every night. No, every night. They're so oh. embarrassed. No, I don't do it, but I've done it. <laughs> I don't do it, but I've done it, she said. Look how excited Dad yeah. is. What about the guy, the little terrorist scores. guy in the corner? <laughs> he's he's know, like not even, deal? he's like joining ISIS. I know. It looks <laughs> like my friend Rami. Yeah. Rami, uh, what's up? Such a Rami. bummer. So that's, uh, that was Benji. We got a couple more here. This yeah, is. I have a question to ask you. Krista. So here. you and Dad are getting older. Oh, this is fantastic. She, and this Dad's lady is sorry, not yes. into this. Dad's uh, about to, he's not about to turn 70, but he is in his 70s, so. He's not in his 70s. He's about to be in his 70s, so. In his 60s. The night before his 70th birthday, when he's 69, are you in his 69 on his 69th? Why would you ask your mother that? Mm. That would send you to counseling. <laughs> but is, are you going to? <laughs> um, I don't know about, I don't think I'm going to discuss this with you. Oh, <laughs> oh, a fucking leaf blower. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's going to do it. Oh, she's so. She's like, that it's lady kinda is horny. so pissed. <laughs> it's kind of horny, right? What about me? I'm 49. What about me? I'm gonna. What am I yeah. gonna do on my 50th? Yeah. Oh yeah. What is that? 50th is a big one. Yeah, but what do you do? 50th. Fi I think you have to. You have to do uh, sexual stuff. You what? do have to do sexual stuff. <laughs> what do you do? Have you been pegged? What does that mean? <laughs> like a girl straps on a little, little and puts in my butt. Yeah. Yeah. But also mm -hmm. like reaches around and cranks one out for you. <laughs> no. That's a big 50th thing. Really? Yeah. Would you not let a girl do that? Maybe if I was wasted. There you go. Yeah. If but, I, like, but you're gonna be if on your I 50th. put if I put like some uh, muscle relaxers in my body. <laughs> you know what I mean? Loosen up my to, rectum. You, you know? have to relax for something like that to go down. I don't. I don't do butt sex, but that, there's a reason. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
It's so uptight. Um, uptight. I love how she got really. She, got mad. she, goes, she said, I'm going to send you into counseling. Yeah. Right? Didn't yeah. she say that? Yeah. She goes. To be in the 70s. So <laughs> the night before his 70th birthday, when he's 69, are you going to 69 on his 69? <laughs> Why would you ask your mother that? That yeah. will send you into counseling. <laughs> but is, are you going to? That's. I think that's real. Like, they've had that conversation before. <laughs> like, every time you get out of line, <laughs> Krista, we're sending you yeah. back to counseling. Again, a woman, <laughs> Krista. But I like that she did the poly technique of following up. But yeah. are you going to? are you going to? That's yeah. the, yeah. the yeah. whole key yeah, here you gotta is persistence. Push it. You got to yeah. push it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you got to push it. 69, 69 70. Yeah. Man. It's a good time. It is great. Um, I had that <sighs> clip pulled that you asked me to pull from CNN. <laughs> um, this is hilarious. This was in regard, I think, was this about the fires? Is that what's going I on here? I don't know. Oh, my God, um, the fires. Or, I know. No, this happened in Tampa, sorry. In Tampa. Oh, about the serial killer, an, an arrest, because they had a serial killer there. Um, and killed some people earlier this year. Anyways, there's a sign language person Um that you know they, they do for like big press conferences and there's something <laughs> that so this woman just came in and she's not a sign language interpreter and just she did it's it fast. It's happened again. <laughs> Another sign language interpreter accused of signing total gibberish. Signing <laughs> what? Gibberish. She's not she's just going to know how to do sign Tampa language. Serial killings. Um, we will be charging. Four counts of first degree murder. Oh, that's hilarious. Standing off to the side, <laughs> apparently translating every word, this woman. Isn't that hilarious? So she did it wrong. She, she doesn't she do sign doesn't language. She doesn't do it at all. She's just she like, just made it up. She's just, they're having fun. Oh, that's like, hilarious. Why would you we do that? Over I wonder. 5,000 tips in this <laughs> Five? <laughs> but it turns out much of what she was signing was nonsense. Nice. She waved her arms around like she was singing Jingle Bell. <laughs> outrage sign language expert. The woman, identified as Derlin Roberts, has a string of arrests. Oh. So how did she come to be translating at last week's high-profile oh police God. news conference? I just didn't ask enough questions. Tampa Hilarious. Police Public Information yeah. Officer Steve Hegarty told me the woman simply showed up out of the blue and offered her services. <laughs> My, oh, wow. God. My immediate reaction Psycho. was, I didn't call for a sign language interpreter, but that's great that we have one here. Right. I let her in. Did this woman appear to know what she was doing? To the untrained uh. eye, and I would include mine um i didn't see any problems hilarious oh my god what that's would awesome. motivate somebody uh, is it a money well, thing she's been arrested she's probably she got a seven sense of humor. shots yeah he, maybe she's like i'll fuck with the police yeah you know? she's yeah. got a sense of humor she's like, i'm gonna fuck with these motherfuckers shit. yeah this shit this watch this shit comes three months after it was revealed <laughs> that the sign language interpreter at <laughs> oh, her hurricane irma <laughs> is this guy a bad guy <laughs> too Florida yeah, yeah he's no faking sense. it too time to act is now he's like <laughs> we won't be using that woman again. Oh, of oh really? Say this yeah. was not a crime, no shit. but it was an ethical violation. Yeah, that's the thing. Is they, 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 they asked. I saw that in the news that day. They're like, "There's nothing like." There's no charge. Yeah, there's yeah. No she charge. just annoyed the shit out She's of everybody. She's just an asshole. <laughs> everybody that's like, I don't, I can't hear. I need right. to. The crazy see. is her tra her criminal record. That's yeah. yeah. She's she's legit criminal. Yeah, yeah, yeah she really is. Hold on, the, the, like our them. house alarm's going off. Hold on. Our house alarm is. She slammed the door too hard. Oh, our nanny. who's she? Our nanny. Oh boy. Right we can talk about her now when she leaves. Now let's talk some God, shit. Damn it, let's get those black penises up here. Yeah, man. Um, so what do you think? About she, the yeah. black dicks? Yeah. I watch that shit. Yeah, it's crazy. Is that your site? Is that your go-to? Yeah, that's my go-to. Is it really? Yeah, because I'm in shock. I can't believe it. How what? How how hard they give it to them? <laughs> that well, when I was growing up, when we used to watch pornos, it was like a it was um it was like a taboo. Interracial? Yeah, it yeah. was like a taboo, and now it's like the opposite. It's like a whole genre. I mean, it's like a yeah. popular one. Yeah, and... Um, Does it and still freak you out in a way? Yeah, and the anal really? sex is like really bizarre too, because again, when I was growing up, it was like a taboo to have sex in the butt, and now like every single porno, it's like it, it's like a taboo to have sex in the vagina. You know what I mean? Sure. It's like the vagina just sitting there, just like, you know, bored. Yeah, you're yeah. right. You know what I mean? Anal's it's like, like the first shot now. It's weird, right? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. I never got into... It's so gnarly. I wasn't into anal, you know? Oh, well, yeah, it is what it is. Was anal a big part of your, you know, sexual exploits? 
There's been a couple times, but you always have to ask the girl. Yeah, well, yeah. You can't just like put it in. No. And do you, you always make sure you have lube in those moments or no? You got to ask the girl. Really? Yeah. Sometimes you can like like lick your finger mm -hmm. and then put that in. And that's sure. kind of like a... <laughs> that's kind of that's that's like a, a version of lube. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If you just like... Yep. And then, and then you just put the, you know what I mean? Weasel it in. And you put the, put the, put it right in the rectum hole. Yeah. And then you do the passing the baton. Why don't you do a sex show? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. A sex podcast. You have, see, here's the thing, you have credibility. Here's what works. When people ha talk about a topic with, and they have credibility, mm. you know? Everyone knows you got laid a lot. Fucking talk about it. Yeah. You can give people tips. Imagine you with like a kid um, who's like, I'm going to college. Uh. I'm nervous. I don't know uh. how to get laid. And uh. fucking Weasel comes in. Shows him what's up. I mean, what would you tell some nineteen-year-old kid listening right now? He's like, I don't, I don't know how to, how to approach girls. What do you tell him? I bet you have good advice. I would. Um, it depends. I think it's a case by case. That's it fair. Depends on what the person looked like. Yeah. And what the vibe of the person was. Let's say and they're just a little kind of... insecure and they are a little overweight and they're, you know, they just uh, they just don't have any experience, so they don't know what to do. But there's cute girls walking around campus. And they're like, I listen well, to Well, I would definitely say the laugh thing. Definitely try to make them laugh. There you go. I think that's important. I'm trying to get Polly yeah. to talk because he, he uh, laugh on black penises. You know, if you uh -huh. see a black penis, you just laugh at it. Yeah. That's what he was saying. To I was do. saying that. But he said, I was yeah. saying he can give advice to guys that want to get laid. You know, it's like, a great idea. <gasps> that would be a great uh, podcast we're just topic, saying. actually. Yeah. Teaching dudes how to get you laid. You guys can do the show, the show that's going to be on FX because Louie's yeah. not there anymore. You could take that slot. <laughs> right. Good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then. And then I can, I can do my podcast from here That's with true. your neighborhood kids yeah. <laughs> coming in here. I can teach yeah. them how to get laid. Yeah, that's a great idea. Mr. Weasel, how yeah, do I get yeah, my Weasel? Weasel? Yeah, I think laughing is the f first and foremost. You know, di disarming the babes. Yeah, you got to get the babes. You to disar laugh. Yeah, you got to disarm the babes. He was just saying like if he had a if there's a 19 year old kid. How and I, I said, well, it's a case by case. Like, what does the kid look like? And he's like, oh, he's a little chubby, a little insecure. And I'm like, we'll probably make the girl laugh. Something silly. Always. Yeah. It's always right? go for laughs. You know, girls always say that horse shit on their profiles. Like, I just want a guy that can make me laugh. That's always number one. Yeah. Mm. And I don't know if that's true, but they say that. Yeah. They do want to make. I think the laughing thing is true. That then is true. Then you got to follow up. You got to go for the clothes. Maybe they can also get a penis enlargement too. So once, <laughs> because once that's a girl true. has a really nice penis, mm -hmm. then usually she goes back to it. Right. You know, it's kind of like familiar territory. It's very before, true. You know what I mean? Before right? you were the Wheeze on MTV and. I was the skis on VH1. Were you getting laid? No, I'm just kidding. Um, pretty yeah, well before yeah. that? Yeah. You had a good game. You had the hair. Right. You had the full head of hair. I don't know. My you mom. My mom owned the comedy store too. I'd be yes. like, "Yo, babe, come on, I'll get you some nachos." <laughs> <laughs> no, Free chicken tenders. Yeah, come and on, hey, I'll get you hey. Shirley Temple. Were you there all the time? At, even as a like as a teen, when, because that's it. When it's even cooler, I think it's like yeah. friends are like, "Oh, let's go drink at you know so and so's house," but you could like walk into the store. Yeah, no, I used to. There used to be the comedy store Westwood. Uh huh. I remember. Yeah, you never were there. I you think heard, people thought I was crazy because Westwood. I feel like I remember a time when no. I very. They how, when it did it in close? Like Eighty four or something. I know, but I feel like I re fucking remember it existing. It may not have been there. Mm. I remember it existing. I yeah. grew up here. I've been oh, here since. Oh well, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, then you remember it was right. It was an, next to it was an arcade. So we used to bring my friends there. We used to do whip hits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and those watch. Were fun. Yeah, and watch all the um. And watch my my girlfriend, a girl named Leslie Zeman from the Valley. She um, went to Birmingham. She was my prom my prom date and my girlfriend in high school. And uh, we used to have sex. Yeah, yeah. In the butt? Did you guys in do butt, butt sex? Or? Probably. She's from the Valley, you know. They all do. Yeah, the Valley, valley Jewish sluts. Valley babe. Those Jews. Valley hoes. Um, but that would be good. You need to give millennials advice. Because I do another podcast called That's Deep Bro, and I get emails from 20-year-olds like, I don't know how to talk to people. How do I talk to girls? How do mm. I make friends? Mm. It's just, you know, it's different. With you can give out free shit. rent, you know? Like a, well, if that they was want, your thing. they want to come over and, yeah, they got out that's of prison. That's a good way to get laid. Actually, that's a great idea. If you want to get laid, put out a thing where people know that if they 
if they fuck you, they could live in your house for free. So it's an exchange mm-hmm. of, uh, of goods and mm-hmm. services, you know? Yep. It's a contract. It's a contract in, in legal terms. Yeah, yeah. That's a really good way to get laid if you're having <laughs> trouble getting laid. Just That's give true, away, Tom. Give away housing. Oh, my God. So who cooks? Men from jail, homeless, or uh, you're a thug. <laughs> you want to come move in? A friend can move with you too, man. Free rent. You get a lease in the key. Fuck me. Piss on me. Beat me. <laughs> a home man now. You see me? You want to come over today and try it out? Try it out, man. Try yeah. it out. Try it out. Try it, it out. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes we don't sense. cook. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you the secret really? to our you joy. don't cook? Well, occasionally I do. But None I, of not... you guys know how to cook. Well. Well, we do. We just, it's, you know, who's got the time? But here's what we decided to do that saved our relationship. Real talk. Even when we didn't have the money, mm. hired a fucking housekeeper. I'm talking Tommy and I were broke as a joke. We still had the $30 a week or whatever mm-hmm. to someone else clean up the boxers, scrub those toilets on the mm. weekend and shit like that. Yeah. It just saves you the heartache. Have you ever lived with a woman? Like, have you ever had a serious relationship? Kinda. Kinda? Yeah. What's the longest? Um, This girl that I've been with for a while right really? now. Really? Yeah. This is the longest? Probably, yeah. How long is it? Over five years. Oh. Really? That's nice. Don't get mad. <laughs> He's like, really? Do you think it's really gonna, I mean, do you think you'll get married? Little weasels? I don't know. Uh-oh. I'm very, uh, you know what I mean? It's very hard for me. I know. Especially because you, you've been me. on your own for so long and you're, yeah. yeah. I like, you know, I kind of go back and forth with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know. I, I that's know. a real, it sounds like it's a real deep issue. It, is, know, an, it I, is a big yeah. issue, yeah. Do you ever see a therapist? Have you ever done that? Yeah. You ever talk about that? Well, I've done group therapy. Oh, no. You need what about one on one? One bro. Get in there. I don't know a good one. Wow, oh, I know a great one. Really? I'll recommend you to. Really? Yeah. Is it a girl or a boy? <clears throat> well, you wouldn't see my therapist. That's a conflict of interest. But Really? Yeah, you can't have your friends and family sing. Do you want a female or a male? Probably a female. Yeah. I think makes more sense for me. You think you have uh, more lady issues than issues with women than men, let's say? Man, I'm I'm cool with everyone. It's just as far as <coughs> like you guys live together, like you have a baby, like that's full on like jumping in the water. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's my issue. Yeah. Full on jumping in the water, and it's like there's something I really like about coming home and knowing no one's gonna be there. And no one. Uh, what what and gives you the most? Nothing personal with her. Right. It's not her at all. It's me. It's like I don't know. It's just like because all day long I'm doing stuff just like you guys are. And then you come home, sometimes you just want to be by yourself. Yeah. You know, but I guess, you know, you guys do that when you're on the road, too. Yeah, we have a lot of away time. Yeah. But do you think she might give you that space, like when you came home, like give you an hour to yourself? Yeah, of course. Yeah, Yeah, of course. But right now I'm staying in an apartment in Silver Lake. So it's kind of like it's a one bedroom apartment. So it's not really conducive. Right, right. Oh, you know what I mean? It's like, it's not like a big house. Yeah. You know, but I I think it is scary to get married and it is scary to get this responsible. Well, it's the jumping in the the water all the way. Well, because I remember when Tom and I first got married, there were times when I felt like I I had to run. Like if we fought or something, I'd be like, I gotta go. I gotta head for the hills. And I think that's like a childhood thing Mm. that I had to resolve in therapy. Obviously, I don't feel that way now, Tommy. Uh, But it's a process, you know? I think Whatever. it's a process. It doesn't. It's not normal. If you're to especially be if you have with someone all the time. Well, it's. I think it's a growing process. You know, especially if you've got some stuff that needs to be resolved or whatever. That's my two cents. Yeah, I'd love for you to go to therapy and tell yeah, us all about on, it. Yeah, come on, let's talk about it. Real quick before you go, I know he's got to go to. He's got to go to. Oh yeah, game. go yeah. Uh, there's an email about King Ass Ripper. Uh-huh. It says, uh, "Mommy's. I was revisiting the Ass Ripper catalog and had a thought. My old roommate." was lactose intolerant to such a degree that he got terrible gas pains every time he drank milk. How funny, it's tied into the other thing. The mm-hmm. volume and consistency of these farts were similar. They're not <laughs> equal to the king's. I believe this may be how the king is able to muster these mythical farts, Josh. You know about King Ash Ripper? No. Uh, he's a internet sensation, and he makes... This is why I want to get out of the entertainment business. <laughs> yeah. For this type of shit. Because, of, because. Well, you're like, he's celebrity on the thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ripping his ass. And yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. I can't keep up with this stuff. No, I know. No, it's but too the, much. Yeah. That's, 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 that's just Damn. That's just raw talent, though. You know what I mean? What's he doing? He's farting. <laughs> she loves it. She loves <laughs> I it. I, it just really tickles me. I, it's 
it's absurd. It's, it's absurd. He does. He Who does. Who would do this for? He does do a lot of. <laughs> Who would ruin their social life and their prospects for getting laid? You know what I mean? Yeah. He's, he's ruining his life with these things. <laughs> He loved it. <laughs> I see. I don't think it's funny at all. Yeah, but yeah. I think it's funny that you guys think it's funny. I know. That's I know. hilarious. Okay. Well, he's legendary. I like mean, that you guys are even putting this on your show. It's funny to me. <laughs> None of you motherfuckers can rip ass like this. Uh, I'm farting on you haters. But he's like a big. He's into it. He's yeah. really into it. He also does a lot of glutton videos. Where Damn, he I'm having a big ass fucking breakfast. Oh, four bean and cheese burritos lathered with two big ass like eggs and fucking six fucking. sausage and cheese patties. Oh, look at that. And four he's got bean a million burritos. Hits, right? That's oh. about five two million? Or a oh, thousand wow. calories five right there. Hits. I don't know. He's and got... each sausage patties. He gets kicked off of a lot of the um, <laughs> platforms that he's on. Right. So then he'll he'll, pe- he'll sneak around. He'll sneak around. So he'll be on Live Leak. Then he'll go back to YouTube. Then he's on just like a, a e bombs. Then he's back on Live. I fart in your face is one of his handles, or Harry and Gross. But I think you should look him up. He's really talented. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite part of the whole day. <laughs> is you doing that? You're like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> or, or he can act in movies and create a persona Why? that catches it's just fire. Overrated, man. Yeah, it's like a fart on command. Tr- become a cultural phenomenon. Or you just fart on the internet. Not for me. <laughs> All right. But I mean, I appreciate it. And I'm happy that he's got so many views. Yeah. yeah. And you can donate if you want him to eat something for you on camera or fart for you. <laughs> He'll take your donations. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's like, yeah. So look, uh, Thank you, first of all, for coming over. I know you got to go you. to this game. Um, it was seriously fun to, to hear the insight on a lot of this stuff, man. Seriously. So your really, advice really is cool. to go the fuck away. If you ever get go tr- tr- hugely successful, go away for a go while. Go away for I think a so. You got to, you, gotta, you know, especially when you're representatives and people around you. And But I don't know. I think that, um, you know, we're, we're, you're lucky to catch fire on anything in this business. You know, you catch a, catch a wave. And if you get as big as I got, you know, like so, like like this, it's good to go away. Yeah, That's yeah. Great advice. I think so too. That's great advice. Yeah, um, you can see a bunch of Polly's videos on Funny or Die. He's done a he's done a number of them, um, and you can catch him on tour. You have any upcoming? Like, when is this gonna air? This comes out tomorrow, man. Oh shit! Okay, I'll be at the uh, St. Louis Funny Bone this weekend. Oh great! Yeah, St. Louis Funny Bone. Yeah, it's a great. It's, a, it's actually the first Funny Bone. Is it really? Yeah, I didn't it's know the that. first one. Yeah. All right. And it smells like it too, which is awesome. Yeah, that's just. <laughs> do they still smoke in there? Like, there's, what? there's some clubs where. Yes, like, I think they, they still they have smoke. Like a, sometimes they have like a smoking show. They're like the early show. They'll smoke. Oh, okay. And then I'm oh. bringing Josh Martin with me. He's great. Yeah, he's good. Who do you guys? Who opens for you guys when you don't you bring someone or you go by mm, yourself? I sometimes bring Matt Fulshron, Joe Bartnick. Jeff Tate. I brought Josh Potter to a bunch of gigs this year. He's from Buffalo, but lives here now. Yeah, very funny, very funny. Yeah, and there's, yeah. there's other guys too I brought, but like this year Potter. We're I brought. gonna find you a girl. We're gonna find me a girl. But a fat, unattractive, unfuckable. Not like a hot. Don't say who he's about to say. Wait, wait till our mics are. <laughs> wait till our mics are. like, I got a fat chick he's, for you. Yeah, he's like, I got someone for you. All the right. girl that works the no, door. No, at no, the no, no, no. <laughs> oh, she's great. She's good. Right? I know who you're talking yeah. about. She's really Let's funny. Tell me her name again. She's a big lesbian girl yes yes yes, yes, I, yes. yeah she's we'll talk about her she's fantastic okay yeah um thank you for coming today yeah, thank you um and uh, also right. thank you guys for listening of course uh, here is your song to go out lift your jeans up higher uh, is this is this guy gonna fart on us <laughs> no, no, no no jason from sacramento thanks so much all right guys see you next time thank you grab your jeans and pull them up higher then you ever now it may seem that your crouch is on fire But your camel toe I cannot ignore So keep them high and tight, you sexy tiger I wanna see those thighs explode Now turn around so I can see your entire Parking garage at the end of my road And 
Forgive me if you see my mouth water Don't mean to be rude, I just want me a bite Cause I've been starving myself, now I'm kinda In the mood for some bum chum tonight And if you don't give me my appetizer With some stinky sauce, I think I'll just die Then I'll come back in reincarnation As your genes when they're high in time 